Um, and I think you'll see from each that they're, they're very raw, very funny, and very much about life. Um, All right, will, will you be helping me with the go to the next slide? When, oh, whenever? I can do that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm just looking at my general direction. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I love Isla. I think she brings Thanks. sunshine into everyone's lives. Uh, she was previously the, the resident coach here at the Hub, so coaching 130 different entrepreneurs. It was more like, to, it was more like five 200. sessions a day for 18 months, so there were a lot that was yeah. going to it. Yeah. So crazy amazing in, in, in short. Um, she, she likes to say that she gives entrepreneurs love at scale. Um, and one of her big projects of a couple is uh, working at Zimplistic on customer service. And Zimplistic, they're currently working on a robot that makes roadies, roadie Prada. So, so it's almost like imagine <laughs> a 3D printer for a flatbread. That's what it is. That's what the machine is, the size of a microwave. And in six seconds, you get a fresh piece of bread. It's like, I like to say, it's the best <laughs> thing since sliced bread. And literally, it is a slice of bread that comes out. Um, and that's, they poached me from the hub to go and manage their customer service team. And um, I love it. <laughs> I get to answer a million emails and talk to a gazillion people. Most of them uh, I will never meet in my life, which makes it more exciting because mm. it's like an anonymous mm. moment of chatting with them. It's yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, should I just get started? Yeah, sounds good. So can we give Isla a round of applause? Press right up. Right here, okay. Yeah. Um, so, I think, it, I think I'm loud enough. Am I loud enough? Okay. Um, fuck up nights. So when Angela asked me, my first reaction was, hells yeah, I fucked up plenty. I've got <laughs> lots to tell. Like I, I, I fucked up at being a really good daughter and living at home until I was 18 because I moved out when I was 15. I, I really fucked up at finishing high school where I was supposed to be. I moved to the United States when I was 17. I really fucked up finishing college because I was so obsessed with working full time at Ralph Lauren selling $20,000 dresses when I was 18. Um, I have fucked up two marriages and I have managed to absolutely love every minute of it. And um, the fascinating thing about fucking up is that it doesn't feel like fucking up. Like it really does not until you start reflecting on it. So when Angela asked me to do this talk, I thought, okay, so the thing that I fucked up on are so many, I don't know what to choose. And then I realized that I really have to um, share about fucking up when I wasn't myself. I was not able, or I, I chose not to be myself. My failure is not actually an event, it is just not being myself. And it all started when I landed in Singapore, uh, six years ago. Um, I had, I was living in San Francisco before this. I was working at the Ritz Carlton guest relations. I was dealing with VIPs. I managed to fuck up plenty there, lots. Like one of my favorite fuck ups is entering the elevator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and his two um, bodyguards, and then busting a retarded joke like, "Ha, ah, isn't this the best bromance?" And then like, having to ride the elevator with them for another 10 minutes up and down. Uh, totally awkward, absolute fuck up. Thank God my boss did not see me do that. But when I moved to Singapore, my life kind of changed. Um, I didn't have my identity. I didn't bring my identity with me. I, for some reason, left it at SFO Airport. And when I arrived here, I felt lost and didn't really know who I was anymore. Um, and especially, I felt like I was in a box. <laughs> What happens when you move to Singapore without a, without a job, without any, any friends, without anything? You, you start to conform to whatever it is. You know how they say you're the average of the five people you spend most time with? Well, if that person is you and you and you, and that is in a you know, 600 square foot apartment, then you start becoming a little bit weird. Um, you don't really know who you are, and I, I really tried that. I tried becoming that for a while. It was really difficult um, being 21, having moved to Singapore, and spending a lot of time with people that were 15 years older than me with completely different goals. I know everything about IVF. I really know how to teach a domestic helper how to make lasagna. Like I, There's a lot of things to be learned, but that was not me. But I really tried to fit in. And um, 
the biggest discrepancy was that that's kind of me. Like if you if you look at those these two comparisons, I think this one looks a little bit more like me. I like I like meeting crazy people. I like when things move fast. Um, I can't wait to talk to absolutely everybody, especially random people. Ideally, someone I have never met before. Ideally, I have someone I have nothing in common with. And I did not get to do that a lot when I came here initially. I was just scared of being myself. Again, failing to be myself. Uh, what happens when you're not yourself? Uh, you don't take smart action. You actually take no action. You sit around. You especially start obsessing about small things that have absolutely never became really good at vacuuming. You know, ain't nobody have a fridge as organized as mine at that point. And it, over time, I realized that I, I came here in 2009, and all of a sudden, summer of 2013 hit. And I became really reflective because it was exactly 10 years since my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And she survived for 10 years, which is amazing, and it filled me with such pride. And I looked at myself having spent four years in Singapore, and I didn't feel like I had made any progress. Like I didn't feel like I was myself anymore. And here's this, this, um, this wonderful woman who has managed to be herself her entire life. And why was I this young person that wasn't able to do the same thing? So I decided I must do something badass, something that would bring me back to being that person on the motorcycle. And I decided to, uh, for cancer, raise some money, $4,000 in a week, um, uh, buzzed off all my hair, and I have kept it ever since. And it's been two years and a little bit more, and I could, it really completely and utterly liberated me, and it forces me to remind myself that I must be myself because life is so incredibly short. So after I buzzed my hair up, I actually got in touch with the hub. Um, I had previously been teaching entrepreneurship at, I, I wrote the curriculum for the Ida School of Domestic Helpers here in Singapore. It's a micro business school and I figured that if I can be a little bit of like a, a, an attached rocket to these ladies saving money and starting their own businesses in their hometown, I'm pretty sure that I can do that for other people too. So I started working with social entrepreneurs here at the Hub. And um, for six months I was mentoring and told Grace that Isla, you're spending every freaking minute at this place, we might as well pay you. And I'm like, sure yes, finally someone's giving me a paycheck. <laughs> and um, so I started doing that. And from then on it was literally five sessions a day for 18 months. Uh, social entrepreneurs, you know, people with apps, people with, um, you know, making products, making bicycles launching websites, doing um, skin lotions, whatever it was, I was excited to be part of everybody's dream. And that made me feel so much more like myself. So over time, I got to become the person that manages all these crazy people, right? Your customers. Um, my goal now is to help entrepreneurs deliver love at scale, which is to me what customer service really is. and. I feel like unless I am a 100% myself, I cannot do this. I cannot, I cannot be patient with everybody, I cannot give my full heart to everybody, I cannot give my full attention to everybody, and keeping this haircut and reminding myself to always be myself and never ever fucking fail again at being myself, um, I can do this. And here are some, whoa, we're all pixelated, but here are some of the interesting... <laughs> Here's one of the people that are in my life right now and they are with me because I am myself as fucked up as I am. Um, this is my team at Rotomatic right now. Uh, up there, the bearded man there is kind of my idol. He has created a software called Zendesk. It's the customer service software. Only customer service nerds would know this. Um, that The kid there, that's me looking pretty bitching at age six. Uh, I want to be that that, that like facial expression that you can't touch me, I'm pretty cool, that's what I want to be for the rest of my life and I'm not letting go of that and I might have to have this haircut until then. In Singapore, this is a great choice with this weather. <laughs> Alright, that's the end of my talk and ask me anything. AMA, literally, I will answer absolutely everything.
magnetized so I love here. Um, but I feel like some of you are not getting that magnetic pull in the back, so I'm going to do this again. We have some seats in the front, and we have some seats spotted along. If also this row wants to just pull its chairs forward, that is great. Um, it's hard to hear, and I think the more you hear, the more you feel it in your heart and in your brain. So please, please move up, or pull the chairs up. If you've ever seen the documentary uh, Welcome to Lagos, it's a BBC documentary. I recommend it to everybody. It's on YouTube. It's the best thing ever. That's a bunch. It's like a city of hustlers. You know, everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody's making something out of nothing. It's a fascinating place, and I would just, I would love to learn from that spirit. Lagos. Good questions. You're like, hell, I, I just know. cannot imagine that they make things out of nothing with things I would not say they're moral. <laughs> and there is my problem. Well, actually, in the documentary, it's fascinating. They, they, there's, there's, a, there's a market where they sell cows and they slaughter the cows. And literally every single piece of the cow is used in some entrepreneurial fashion. Like, at the end, there, some, someone makes candles out of something out of the cow. So it's incredible. Like they, the, the level of entrepreneurial spirit there is just breathtaking. Yeah. Yes, um, during your presentation you mentioned that you moved to the US. What was your particular reason to go to the US? Oh boy, I was 17 and in love. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was that kind of really intelligent thought through you know, strategic decision of mine. <laughs> yeah, um, I yeah, moved to the States for a boy. So that was the first match? Yeah, that was number one, yeah. With questions, please just yell at everyone. Uh, yeah. Has anyone uh, any unique value that would criticize you for fuck-ups? And if yes, how would you cope with that? Oh, if someone's, oh, criticize me for my fuck-ups? Yeah, like, like, like Oh, that you screwed up. oh, you know what, the, the best, like the most heartbreaking and weirdest criticism ever was actually when I was raising money for cancer, I sent, I sent 80 personal emails to people being like, hi, this is what I'm doing, please fucking donate. Um, <laughs> I'm raising my, I'm, I'm you know, shaving my hair off and, and in one week I want to raise all that money. And, and one person sent me an email, but she was like, Isla, you know, you're a cute girl. And if you raise your hair up off, then you're really gonna fuck up your life. Like people, no, you're never gonna get a job again. Like people are gonna look at you differently. And I'm pretty sure that you can't handle it. And I was like, yep. And this was the last time I'm ever speaking to you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only one person, like one out of eighty. So that's that's pretty good. More questions? Did you have your own startups as well? I have ran a little consultancy once. Um, that was my first project before starting here at The Hub. Um, I'm part of startups, I feel like, constantly. I've never had an idea where I felt like, oh my god, if I, have, if I can't put this thing into the world, I will die. But I've definitely met a lot of people that are like, oh my god, your idea must exist. I want to be a part of that one. What was your... Worst moment, like like described in horrifying detail. What was your lowest of the low? Like in life? Yeah. Okay, I can I can be very specific there. I I can actually visualize it exactly. It was the week after my 
second husband left me, I was in the bathroom and I literally was crying so I couldn't breathe. And I was pretty sure that I was not gonna make it. Like, pretty convinced, like 99% sure that I was not gonna make it. That's my little sound. And then what next? Uh, Singapore, no air conditioning on, it got hot, I was sitting in there, I was like, oh my, <laughs> get, get the fuck over it. So I got up and I went for a walk. <laughs> yeah. Remember that when your AC is hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Maybe one more? I have one more. Yeah. Do you think now that you went through so many fuck ups, yeah. that you won't make any in the future? Oh, I can't, can't wait for the next one. I can't wait for the next one. There's going to be plenty like today I fucked up. Tomorrow I'm going to I'm probably going to fuck up on the way home. <laughs> I, I, it's going to happen again. But it doesn't really feel like fuck ups anymore because it's not fuck up if you talk about it. I have this thing with a friend of mine. You might, guys might know him, Steve Feiner. We have this thing where we call the daily face slap. And it's literally like the things that I fucked up on today. And we will, it's like the, the ultimate, the tightest feedback loop in the world. Like when you when you notice I fuck up and you say it right away, oh my god, I totally fucked up right here. And then it's no longer scary and it's actually kind of fun. And you can at the end of the day say, mm, I'm pretty sure I'm 1% better today than I was yesterday. For a fact, because that thing that I did earlier, I'm going to try not to do again. Okay, fantastic. Can you please give Ireland a round of applause?